Welcome everyone. Um, in this video I would like to show you a game called Masters of the World Geopolitical Simulator 3. And why do I actually do this? Well mostly because this game um, is not, people are not that familiar with it. And I've, see, I've seen on, on Steam for example a lot of people asking questions about this game. But there are not really uh, that much uh, questions being answered. So in this um, small tutorial, I would like to show you how this game works and what you can expect from the game. And I hope that you guys will like it. Now, if you all like it, um, I will post more videos um, about this game and uh, possibly initially mostly on the tutorial stuff. But later on, I might do a playthrough as well. So first, what is the purpose of this game? Well, this game is, as it says, a geopolitical simulator. And that means that the game is focused on um, all kinds of aspects that are important nowadays with, with geopolitical um, uh, considerations. So for example, uh, what you have in this game is uh, all the different organizations that are in the world. That the NATO is in there, the World Trade Organization is in there, the IMF is in there, and the World Bank is in the game. So all these organizations that you uh, often hear about in the news, for example, and that are important, of course, for, let's say, controlling the entire world economy and the balance within the world, those are all in. And that makes already this game... Um, yeah, a bit more special than other games. Not that there are really many games similar to this one on the market. I would say this is about the only one that is there. And um, it does have its problems. Um, uh, the game it has some bugs. Um, especially if you play it for a longer uh, amount of time, those will become more apparent. But I must also admit that this is not really an easy game to get right. And um, I kind of forgive them for now at least for these bugs. The only problem is that, uh, oh well, they are not really that uh, fast in fixing them, and um, if they are fixed. And that is a bit of the downside of this game, and uh, hopefully that will change in the future. And I also hope that by having more people playing this game um, and getting familiar with the game, um, the amount of, let's say, attention that the game will get from its developers will also increase. But anyway, that's besides the point. So, what you first want to do is, of course, you have to set up a scenario for yourself, so in which you would like to play. And you have a quiz, but that is not really interesting, I would say. I don't even know why it's actually in there. It's just boring and not interesting at all. So, you normally go for yeah, just a new game, and then you have all these different kinds of scenarios. And some of these scenarios are actually, they, you start out with these, those are <laughs> all the scenarios with the one here. You start out with them, or, um, well, maybe not all of them, but some of them you do start out with. And then you score some points over time uh, by completing scenarios, but also just by getting further in the let's say, the, the base game, which is the world of 2013. That's the base uh, game, the base scenario. And it's just unlimited, it's open-ended, it doesn't, yeah, it, it doesn't even have an end. So. But um, you, you, yeah, you score points there, and those points you can then, um, those will unlock further of other scenarios. Now, personally, I must admit that I haven't really played with many of these scenarios. Um, I've played with this one, for example, the re-election campaign, which is an interesting one because you then immediately start out uh, with an election, um, which is interesting but also a bit um, dangerous because the chance that you will lose the election is there, of course. Then you have a uh, game that will end quite fast. Um, Another very interesting scenario, especially if you want to try a different party initially for a country, is the opposition scenario. The opposition scenario actually lets you, uh, allows you to lead a country 
uh, with an opposition party of your choice, meaning that you can just select a any party that is uh, normally, or uh, in 2013 at least, um, in the opposition of the government, and uh, you could just play and, and rule the country, or let's say control the country, govern the country by, by such a party. So that's interesting. Then you have these so-called yeah, world war scenarios, I say that they're a bit um, shallow, um, so personally I don't really like them that much. But of course this is the main big scenario. Just a world in 2013, from the perspective of the let's say parties or the people that were actually leading the country at that date. So let's get into that. So for the um, tutorial I would like to pick a country you can see that there are many countries but not almost all countries of the world are represented in this game and of course uh, like the scenario uh, implies it's a uh, current day uh, scenario so it's not really uh, it's not really a, a historical game it's just like yeah governing the country as it is now uh, and well, first I would like to just, because I'm from the Netherlands, I would just like to show you a bit about the Netherlands. One thing, it's a smaller country, that makes it a bit easier to get familiar with the game, so that is good uh, for tutorial purposes. So let's get into that. Well, in the game, um, people have different names than in reality. Um, this is done, I think, just to, let's say, not offend people. Um, and maybe even because some names are protected, I don't know, it sounds strange, but they do uh, alter the names a bit. But the pictures usually are quite um, similar to what you can expect um, from a person in power at that time point. This is for example Mark Rutte, um, you can look him up, um, you, will see, you will see that he resembles the real person um, by picture at least quite well but um, I don't like that so much so I uh, made a, a different kit in which I've just altered especially for the Netherlands but also a bit for Belgium I've altered some of the uh, political leader names and also uh, pictures so that they are more, more uh, lifelike uh, not for Rutte in this case because this is really a uh, let's say a made of a um, specially designed made picture for this uh, politician uh, but for the other politicians it's usually a generic picture and uh, those are not that nice anyway so here you have different uh, difficulty settings if you choose for the lowest difficulty setting you'll be setting you will be able to get um, let's say a professor um, telling you a bit about how the game functions personally I I think that could have been done a bit better. Um, it's not so interesting at the moment, and uh, frankly, most of the things he says um, uh, are not really teaching you a lot, I must say. So, let me just uh, show you how, how to start up the game and how to play this game a bit. Um, well, then you have sliders, for example, for disaster, for warmongering, terrorism, and turmoil. Um, those are recommended to be put at the uh, medium levels uh, for realism. Um, I must say that warmongering, even though it's at medium and even though it's supposed to be realistic, I still tend to think that this is a bit exaggerated. Um, there is a bit too much warmongering literally uh, going on. Which you will see. And also, I must say, some things do seem a bit scripted. Um, for example, you will usually see that Poland and Belarus are getting, uh, well, let's say, in conflict with each other uh, quite early in the game. And usually, it, presents of a, it results in one of the two actually being uh, annexed by the other. Uh, usually, that means that Belarus will be annexed either by one of the Baltic states or the uh, or Poland itself, but yeah, that's that's about the warmongering setting. So it, medium is recommended, but I, I tend to think it's a bit too exaggerated. 
terrorism seems fine, though likelihood of getting terrorist attacks do, does seem to be a bit high. Um, turmoil seems okay, I must say. I mean, you, you, it, let me explain that in this game, you should really be careful not to upset your people too much. And you can easily upset them, that is. Um, and if you do get re uh, revolts and strikes and demonstrations, those can be really tough to get rid of. Um, you can have, an, uh, let's say, if it is quite limited, like one day or only in a couple of states or provinces or so, then you can manage. It's not that special. But the moment you actually get into, let's say, countrywide strikes and countrywide turmoil, it's very hard to turn the tide. And, uh, in my opinion, it's you're almost as good as dead then. And, and you get events like uh, they want you to resign and in a way it doesn't matter because even though you resign uh, if you resign you lose the game and if you don't resign you get killed or whatever you also lose the game so in any way you lose so re resignation doesn't hold any particular uh, effect that is beneficial to do which I think is a bit meager but Maybe in the next game that will improve. Maybe you can get into a real opposition-like status and then try to work your way back back towards uh, the government, towards uh, power itself, right? the executive uh, power that you represent in this game. But okay, so that is uh, about that. Let's just start up the game and, um, and start playing it a bit. So as I was saying, this is a quite, well, I must say this, I think it's the most realistic game from a political perspective that I've ever played. Um, I have played Democracy, um, the third uh, version of that one. I've never played uh, Democracy 1 or 2. But um, I must say that this game is a bit more to my liking. I think that Democracy has a bit more adjustable sliders here and there, you have a bit more freedom internally into managing your country, but it's just your country and it doesn't involve any outside influence. After giving televised holiday wishes that will not soon be forgotten, the head of state spent Christmas Eve in private with his family. But early this morning, he left in a helicopter to pay a surprise visit to a hospital before meeting duty soldiers in a barracks. The day ended on a major road in the capital, where he accompanied a team of garbage collectors assigned to pick up trash in front of department stores. Our head of state is starting out an exemplary year, under the gaze of cameras from all of the country's television stations, of course. Okay, so these kind of news flashes you will get, re um, well, you can get quite often. Uh, usually they are triggered by you. Um, and they're not really a, uh, like this was really a, it, yeah, a news flash from a, a news group, but um, those are actually only in the beginning uh, of the game, and, um, and later it will only re uh, yeah, revolve around your you as a person, as the leader of the country that holds speeches in front of the camera. Now you have these rating agencies; those are not really for the Netherlands, so relevant of course they are relevant for every country, but. In general, the Netherlands has a quite, uh, let's say, quite strong economy still, and doesn't really have a lot of problems with the outstanding credit line. Um, so, Although yeah, you will get these kind of messages, your but not may that not interesting, be and you will get more of them, so because like this is just only the Chinese you uh, rating while recommending and you Isn't will get these kind of messages. That extreme poverty is increasing in our country. Those are all kind of advices and uh, things that you should try to work on, at least in their opinion. Um, you are free, of course, to just ignore them. Um, but that is, of course, on your own uh, uh, judgment. Crises situations always generate tension between communities. So, okay, let's just now get into the game itself. Uh, one of the first things that I would um, do is just do nothing, actually. And 
that sounds maybe a bit strange, but um, in general, I must say that this game is more. It's it's really the play is quite realistic. And that also means that you cannot really force a lot of reforms and force a lot of law changes within a very short time frame. Just not that would not be realistic, and therefore the game does not support that either. It's um, well, you can you can do law changes. I mean, that's quite easy, but. Don't expect that if you would increase this number to, 10, uh, to let's say, uh, 30% or so, that you can get away with that. Um, no, for one, likely no party will support you, even not your own party. And even if they would, uh, it would really upset the people so much that you will be forced to resign within weeks, maybe days. So that's not what you can do. Um, I've also seen on YouTube some videos um, yeah, talking about doing, let's say, a invasion of Canada of um, of uh, of Canada by the U.S. and um, well, that usually also results into into a an early resignation. Um, those videos, in my opinion, don't, do not explain anything about this game. They're just there to show off. Uh, what you what you could do and for that purpose they are good enough but besides that they don't really serve any point to be quite frank um okay so like i said already the first thing that you want to do in this game is actually do nothing but instead study the country that you start out with now likely you will study if you will start with a country that you know already quite well because you might live in it or you yeah you, you are familiar with it and it's not obligatory of course but I would advise that because then you know a bit how the tensions work within the country which groups are important or which groups are less important and of course what kind of laws are in place already and um, what to expect from the economy as well. Uh, but anyway, so what you want to do first is just analyze, in my opinion, the industry of your of, sorry, yeah, the industry of your country. So for that, you go to the finance tab, and here you see the uh, the main production sectors um, that your country has, and uh, which actually produce the most in terms of national sales uh, within a year. You see that the Netherlands is really um, very strong country in terms of chemistry um, we have a lot of factories over here that actually produce chemicals um, we have uh, paint uh, like factories we have of course a huge um, i would say oil but especially a refinery sector with, for fuel so that is represented well in the game um, and of course uh, yeah the housing and building construction sector is quite significant but that is for most developed modern western like countries we have a um, you know, decent tourism hotel trade sector i must say that i would estimate this to be a bit lower but the game does tend to lose this sector quite fast i think due to a bug or so so ignore that for a while then we have of course consumer electronics which is like uh, yeah, the lightning lighting sector uh, philips or uh, a computer sector like uh, ASML. Um, then we have uh, a huge income um, by the gas fields that we have in uh, Groningen, in the north of the country, which is represented in the game. Um, those actually aid the treasury quite a lot. Of course, they do have some problems, um, which are, I know, they're not really depicted in the game. Um, so the problems that in real life we have, like for example houses collapsing, stuff like that, it's not in the game, uh, which is a bit sad in a way, because that would have been interesting. Um, well, then we have of course our familiar agricultural sectors, like especially vegetables, potatoes, stuff like that, and then we have uh, the chemical industry itself and fossil electricity. So these are the important sectors for our country, and this already uh, yeah, teaches you one thing: fuel and chemistry. Let's say oil-like sectors, sectors important for oil, um, of, uh, in which oil has a big impact, are um, in this country, are in the Netherlands, uh, 
pretty important. So what we want to do actually, and that I will show you, is boost our economy a bit by getting cheaper oil um, and making deals with countries to deliver that cheaper oil. And that will actually boost our industry. But I will show you, I will show you that. Um, besides that, some other things that might be of interest are perhaps selling some natural gas um, that we have in excess. Um, and besides that, I, I don't think that anything over here is, is that much. Oil, that is for this country at least the key to getting a bit more or, yeah, economical growth. Okay, let's just get time going. Um, and let the mini map like thing. How do you expect people to spend money with such low purchasing power? Don't delude yourself. The only way to effectively boost growth is to give a serious boost to consumer spending. There is no other way. Do I have to draw you a picture? Well, no. But so this is. Um, one of the labor unions um, foremans and um, those are actually important in this game because you have these so called, I will show you, um, associations and key people, key figures and these people are actually important for your country. You have for example all the people from your, uh, let's say, uh, own party, I'm sure they picked it here. Um, then you have associations, which are people that are, for example, important for fighting AIDS, uh, people that are important for, uh, <laughs> let's say, drivers' organizations, motorists, motorheads, petrol heads, if you like. Um, and you have for the foreign communities, you have people. And, yeah, well, all other. Kind of groups as well. We have institutions which are the banks, and for example, the key figures of each of the provinces. You have the unions, and those are actually important because you really want to, let's say, keep these people happy. Then you have um, your own government, and I've adapted this a bit to also have the uh, say the other coalition partner in there. In the regular game this game doesn't really have coalitions. I mean you have a coalition but it's it's more like okay you have to share power within the parliament but it's not like you have to obligatory form a government consisting out of a majority. That's not the case. It's a bit sad but I can understand it because that's quite difficult to actually get into a game I would say. It would really mean a lot of uh, Revise the entire uh, system and how it works. You have these people that are, let's say, popular people or like uh, athletes, um, religious persons, uh, intellectuals, which are also important, and artists, which are like the, uh, yeah, the cultures, culture group uh, people. People that are involved in uh, playing musical instruments, that are uh, singers, that are novelists, fashion designers you see here. And, and of course, as you can see also here as well, some hate you, some like, um, some people like you, some. And that is important to get things done. Yeah? People do need to like you in order to, uh, to get, uh, get effects. Now, yeah, this is just a message. So, as I was saying, um, what we want to do is, um, is actually show you a bit about how this game will play. You have newspaper events, which are um, once a week. Those will actually show some interesting um, aspects of the game. Uh, they can actually be very important because sometimes they will tell you things about um, uh, the game on, or how you are performing. Um, because not everything is so uh, self-explanatory. Um, like for example, this. This well, it's nice that you know that, right? So, therefore, the newspapers can be important. Settle they have the EU stability pact. This is the agenda for the next summit. 
Your presence is of course necessary. Shall I confirm? This is of course a EU related event, uh, which is a couple of times uh, each year. You get together and you set a setting for either the uh, EU Stability Pact, which is uh, the amount of, let's say, GDP deficiency you can have uh, each year, uh, or it's the agricultural budget, um, which impacts the amount of money that the EU will um, spend on agricultural subsidies. Oh, this is also rated aged. So, then of course you have disasters. Um, which are occurring in the entire world. Um, you can donate money to them. Um, it's not obligatory, of course, but if you like, you can do that. It's, um, you will improve relations with countries, so usually I just give a bit. Like, for example, here, Somalia, let's just give them 3 million or so. Congo, it's a more important country. For me at least, because I know I can get some oil from them, so I will give them a bit more just to boost our relations. Okay, so more news, but not of any interest at the moment. So, one of the things I will now show you is making a deal in the game. Um, there are two ways to actually make a trade agreement. Um, one of them, oh, you see already, so our relation with the uh, Democratic Republic of, of, of Congo is actually quite good now, thanks to our donation, I must say, because I know for certain that uh, before the donation they did not have a very good relation with us. Uh, let's just do that. Of course, handing out this money is all very nice, but uh, you do also need to earn some So, we are going to earn some money. For our economy and for our, let's say, productive base in the country. So what we are going to do is we are going to design a contract that will help us get our fuel um, industry um, become more profitable and thereby boost our industry. So I'm going to call this like the you know, Dutch oil contract. And it's going to be with the Democratic Republic of, of Congo. Um, and we want to purchase some oil. And no, for they are not an OPEC member, which make li makes life a bit easier to negotiate with them because they don't have a set price. So the game also has the so-called yeah I don't know how you call them exactly, but production uh, organizations, which are like cartels in my opinion, uh, like the OPEC, and and they actually set a price. Um, Depending upon the society of the organization, um, well, twice a year, or once a year, or uh, every month or so, it depends on the organization. And uh, that price is then set for all the members within that organization. And that is, of course, like the OPEC, is designed to be a kind of a way to control the market prices of the uh, of the oil production or the oil itself. So we are going to purchase, or try to purchase, each year, 500,000 toes um, for this price. Um, and that for 5 years. You can adjust this as well, you can increase it or decrease it. I just like the 5 years now. And this deal will be for 135 billion euros. Um, you can add clauses if you like, which can be an additional trade good, not anything else, so not diplomatical negotiations or so, no alliance or something like that, but only trade goods you can add to the clauses. And um, and those will actually yeah, make the entire contract a bit more complex. And that can help because it can mean that uh, deals that would otherwise not be accepted get accepted just because another component within that deal is actually very favorable for the country. So that can help giving a bit more uh, edge of uh, um, or, uh, or a bit more power to get things done if the, yeah if the other negotiator doesn't really want it by itself. Okay, so we will now do this by distance, which means we will not do a state visit. 
which you can also do and then negotiate a trade deal but you will now directly do it throughout the um, yeah, diplomatic channels so this will take a, a bit of time before we get a reply and then you get into a cycle of negotiations which will just uh, adjust the price most likely or the amount of production that we are uh, uh, so buying so this seems like a good deal i can lower this maybe a bit so i usually tend to go a bit lower um just start out low they will just overbid any of they will just um, ask a lot anyway and then you can work a bit more to the middle just how it goes in real life negotiations maybe even a bit more. maybe let's do 260. okay so this sounds good and you see the response will take several days now one of the things that I will show you now, in the meanwhile, is that um, yeah, you have your debt, of course, which is important to keep an eye on. Um, you have certain countries that have borrowed money to you. Uh, so, for example, the US, you have the United Kingdom, and you have your own country, so that's your own bank, your central bank, that actually, uh, yeah, let's say, gets money from uh, wealthy uh, yeah, that, that will just issue bonds, state bonds that people can buy. They will just loan uh, the state some money. But other countries can do that as well. And it's also the central banks, of course, of these countries. So you see that this, this is the current rate, interest rate. So that is what you see here. Then you have, of course, the taxation, which is very important. But on the other hand, I think you should really try to mess with that for the first half a year uh, just to see how your country plays out to be and whether you actually need the money or not because of course the more money it's not like uh, some games that are without any consequence you just um, let's say ask for more tax income and, um, and you get more tax income and that way you actually um, aid your country because you get more income it, it doesn't hurt anyone because the people are non-existent. Over here in this game, it's actually the case that if you are taxing your people um, above average, they will get poorer, and um, that will impact your economy. Um, of course, it's it's all a balance uh, thing. It's all um, a matter of just make, getting a good, uh, stable uh, situation, um, which in most let's say modern countries you start out with it's all quite stable but oh yeah what I did want to show is the current economical growth um, that's of no it's not of it's the finance step I think yeah so here you have the growth rate currently it's 1.1% on a yearly basis which is like the average growth rate indeed that the Netherlands has right now it's uh, uh, about one percent so here we now get the reply and you do see that they are asking more than of course uh, we offered which is what you can expect but at least they are willing to negotiate and that we will do it so we will now offer their average market price now hopefully now we, we will go further and closer together and thereby actually and we get the response again and then we actually get somewhere in the middle which is beneficial for both our countries let's just offer them a bit more now or maybe a bit more let's go a bit faster towards them because otherwise if you negotiate for too many times some people will also get annoyed and will just break off negotiations that's also not advisable um, I don't know okay they will not get accepted anyway, usually a lot of people are just rejecting what I'm trying to uh, new members. Okay, let's go for 300 now. So we will now, or maybe 305, we will now try to work towards the middle. And you will see that after we get this contract signed, we will get oil imports that are costing us way less than our current average uh, costs. And that will actually boost our economy quite a lot. Here we go. Let's see. 
they've signed the agreement so that's nice then we get a call. well done you have just signed your first contract a note from my department will allow a rapid expert appraisal on this contract it is attached to the contract okay let's look at that it's not that interesting but just for you to I need uh, energy. Here we have contracts. And here you see the assessment. But you can also see this is the contract, detailed assessment. Here you can see the uh, benefits and the downside. So um, the assessment is average. Um, it, it, it's a very low price, and that is very good, of course. But the volume is doesn't come close to what we actually need. So that's the downside of the contract. But I don't mind that, to be honest. I, I think this is just a good contract. You already see that the deficit is really decreasing. So uh, that's good. That's a good sign. And likely the stock market will now shoot through the roof um, quite fast. You see already that the growth rate has been adjusted now to over 5%. That's just because fuel is just such a significant industry within our country. So getting a good oil deal aids our industry a lot. Here you see public finances increasing. This improves our approval rating, which is the most important rating that you have in the game. Um, the approval rating will determine whether you have to resign or whether you can just stay in power. Um, so from that perspective, it's 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 very important. Um, I do. Think that the approval rating can, for example, um, uh, increase too rapidly if you do proper things. On the other hand, it can also decrease really fast. So achieving like a hundred percent approval rating is really feasible in this game, which I think in reality would be almost impossible, if not just impossible outright. Um, most, let's say, presidents and prime ministers, and politicians are somewhere near and around, well, even the moment they get elected, indeed at 50%, um, 51 maybe, yeah? and quite often in a very short amount of time it will just decrease and it will go down as low as well. With Hollande uh, lately it was I think even like well, 15% or so what I read. Yeah. Even though, due to the recent attacks in Paris, uh, his approval rating all of a sudden shoot through the roof and increase with about, I think, 30% within a couple of days. Though that will likely settle again. But, I mean, just to say that indeed in this game that can also happen. That you have these really surges of approval ratings going up very fast, but it can also just go down very rapidly. If you just make a couple of mistakes, you can easily just get kicked out of office. Okay. Our oh yeah. So one of the things that we actually need to do. The agents were captured or killed during the operation. Uh, um, so we have our secret servers. It is difficult to say what might have happened on the ground, but the theory of a leak would lead me to suspect a betrayal, to an extent that lies between 12.7 and 23.8. Now this is just nonsense, uh, don't pay attention to that. The only important thing is that the two agents were arrested, and in India. Um, so what we have here is the secret service. What they do is actually they fight um, terrorist groups, like you see over here, which we actually need to do. Because they will all otherwise just commit um, uh, terrorist attacks throughout the country. So we want to limit that. And that will really help your approval rating a lot when you fight them. Um, but what you also have is exterior uh, spies, as to say, agents. And you can just send them abroad. Here you can just send them to any country that doesn't have agents yet. And then they have a couple of missions. They can approach political groups, which is like important to, um, let's say, make connections with uh, the opposition of a country. And then usually they will, um, you can have an appointment with one of those um, leading figures, and you can donate money to them, and that will apparently help uh, help them in their struggle within the country. Now I must say that I haven't really thus far seen any reason to actually do that uh, besides just a role-playing purpose um, 
but I haven't seen any effect of really aiding a political group. No doubt it will have an effect, but it, to me it hasn't been really noticeable. Maybe that's a good thing, because I think that that would otherwise be a bit overpowered, perhaps. What you can do is approach, uh, well, it's a similar to political groups, but unions and associations, and of course they you also aid them by just sending them money. And uh, that will actually, um, yeah, maybe also reduce their relations within the of, uh, with the current government, and increase their influence and power within the country. That can also have effects, of course, just as having a bad relation with these organizations or unions uh, within our country now uh, has has an effect. But to me, indeed, it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to uh, spend like a, well, a billion, but uh, to me it, it seems a bit like wasted money still. Uh, but maybe I'm just missing something. Um, then you have approach terrorist groups, which I think just indeed increases their power. So a terrorist group, as I can show you, they have an estimate amount of members. And uh, this can be increased if you support a terrorist group abroad. I've noticed that because I've, I've had terrorist groups and I sometimes I do a lot against them and they just grew uh, out of their own, uh, let's say, support. But you can also have sometimes that um, you discover a link between a terrorist group and a country that actually fi uh, financially supports such a terrorist group. And then I do have the impression that the amount of um, members uh, that are within that group are really increasing a lot. Uh, within a very short amount of time. So I do have the impression that there, uh, there is a huge effect, or there can be a huge effect. Though, I must say terrorist groups thus far have only been a nuisance than actually being a real threat. Um, okay. So what we wanted to do is actually reduce the amount of agents that we have abroad. And you can do this like just scrolling down. I will just remove all the agents that I just deem unnecessary. I don't want any agents in Cuba. I mean, those times are a bit gone, right? That Cuba was the big red threat. I mean, maybe not for the, uh, for the European countries, but for uh, the US. Doesn't seem that relevant anymore. I will keep some in Indonesia. Just uh, has been a former colony and just to keep an eye on things. It's not that I'm going to do there. Uh, Going to do any activities there anyway, but maybe reduce it even a bit. Um, then we have Iran. Well, that's of course maybe a bit more important to actually send some decent number of agents there. Iraq might be important just because of the terrorist threat uh, that you can have within that country. Libya is important. North Korea can be a bit more important. Pakistan, uh, maybe like that. South Africa, I don't see a point of actually having a lot of agents there. I mean, to be honest, I don't see a point of having any agent there. Syria, I can see the, uh, as a Western country, the necess necessity to actually have some agents. I don't see any point here. And this can be also important just because they are bordering us in the Caribbean. Um, and the Vietnam War. Those days are also gone, right? That we had the threat from Vietnam. Um, with the uh, Vietnam War. Okay, so let's just continue. So what we want to do now is of course we want to keep an eye on these. So we will just infiltrate them. Maybe also this society we can infiltrate. We will leave the Chinese ma the Mafia alone for now just because they are not such a terrorist threat and they are also um, let's just put it like they are, you cannot really, it's not that, that, that good to actually spread out your uh, attention, your focus on uh, a lot of targets. So two, I think in this case, is actually enough. Maybe it's this one you can just drop it now. I go for this one as well. Oh, the total D heart. See, country of origin, Afghanistan. Okay. Now, 
Um, let's just go to the budget. I do think that's important just from the start out to increase this. We will just increase agent training by uh, one star, or maybe two. Let's just go for two. We will support a fight against terrorism by another two. This will cost us 250 million yearly. But we can lower this a bit. This is not that important. We'll lower the cost again a bit more. Um, and maybe counter intelligence is also. Okay, so let's just increase this. Have a bit more agents also might seem like a good idea. Okay, let's confirm this. So this will cost us like uh, 250 million extra. Is it rejected? Uh, but that will help us in the long term because it will f help us fight terrorist organizations and that will aid us in our approval ratings and it will keep our country safer. And over time, we can even use them to, uh, yeah, to do, uh, do some mischief abroad. Okay. So it, of course, our economical deal has been is now in the in the paper, um, in the yeah the newspaper. And you see here that the employment is dropping a bit. This is of course because of the, uh, the boost towards the, uh, the oil industry, which will likely also have a lot of people working in it. Oh yeah, this is the usability pack. I just go down with this just because the Netherlands has a not so high deficit. And um, if you just go like on average, I think there, it's like a consensus that is being, uh, that is being formed. And uh, it will go up anyway, because there are more countries likely want to have, that want to have a higher maximum budget deficit than a lower one. So public finances in, is improving. So we're now 55% approval rating, which is nothing spectacular still, but at least it's uh, increasing. So that's good. So we're now in February. So have uh, let's have a look at the. Uh, at the um, inflation as well. So one important thing, as you all know, likely is uh, that inflation counteracts economical growth. It's also important for economical growth because the EU currently has, of course, its problems with having a deflation-like uh, stance almost. So uh, they want to actually boost inflation a bit because otherwise people tend to think that okay, let's just wait with spending money because. Uh, a month from now or so, things will be even more, will be even cheaper. So, uh, from that perspective, um, that is why people fear uh, currently having a, uh, a very low inflation or almost to a uh, deflation like uh, setting. Ooh, so this is one of the terrorist attacks, I think. Fire of a criminal origin was caused last night at the very heart of an annex of my administration. Despite the efforts of his colleagues to save him, an employee was imprisoned by the flames and was later found to be completely charred. Uh, the people responsible for this drama deserve to be severely punished, and I will personally lead the investigation. Another group has claimed and this responsibility. This is, of course, the, uh, the attack This terrorist itself. movement is inviting so itself to Groups will to claim party. this, claim the attack, and then your security services will at some point find out who it was, but I think that's really irrelevant because you want to get rid of all these groups uh, because they're all a threat. Another group has claimed responsibility. Like this, right? So I don't see the point of actually sparing a group or something like that. Maybe your focus could be a bit different, like you want to eliminate one uh, earlier than the other, that could be. But in the end you want to get rid of them all. Our infiltrated agent was spotted and murdered. So this can happen. So now our infiltrated agent was uh, killed in action. And uh, that means that uh, for the uh, Netherlands students of the Jihad, we are not currently infiltrating them. So we will send out another infiltrator actually get in and if you infiltrate successfully you can have the option to actually start rolling up the organization usually that will not go in one go it will take you many years to actually complete that but that you will arrest 
various figures over time, uh, which will actually decrease the amount of members in that organization and thereby make them less uh, of a problem. And of course you can also have relations with other countries, you can also see how another country is doing. For example Belgium, you had uh, yeah, Enzo Di Lupo, so uh, Di Lupo uh, in real life um, in Belgium, who is now out of office by the way, but okay, it's 2013, you have the anthems. But yeah, that's all it is for fun. So what is important now is that we just keep on going with this uh, rate. I mean, the Netherlands is not really like a country that needs much attention at the moment. I mean, we have a decent economy. Uh, the deficit is quite low in comparison to other countries. And okay, let's see what is this. Attacking little work down for me. Analysis. Okay. False claim by the fighters of the uh, integrity. Yeah. Okay. Analysis of the information. Well, not that much uh, interesting happening there. But what was he saying? Oh yeah. So um, it's of course the relation with these with your uh, yeah with all the countries are depicted here. here. So green means a good relation. Red. This is more like neutral, and red is more like a hostile relation. Syria is really hostile towards us. India is also not that friendly, apparently. North Korea is, of course, um, not very much fond of anything from the West, uh, let alone maybe any country. I don't know why Mexico would have bad relations with us, but it's also a bit fueled by um, which parties are in power. Um, like for example the Netherlands is more like a um, would say not really conservative but more liberal country. And currently um, the conservative um, right or let's say conservative liberals if, if you uh, if that is really a term um, are in power now. There's a bit more of the uh, old-fashioned liberal principles that are kept high um, by the current uh, party power, which is this one. Our info. But uh, in general, uh, this is a very liberal country and therefore any communist-like country, for example, um, will have reduced relationship. Uh, will have a reduced relationship. The preparations are complete. The whole country is preparing to joyfully celebrate this occasion. It would be a joy if you would participate in the festivities and mingle with the faithful. They would be very grateful and it would send a strong message. But is that what you want? Yeah, that is what we want. So we now attend the uh, Easter ceremony for the uh, religious organizations, which will boost your popularity, of course, with the religious uh, or devout uh, Voters see that now because we did not really like keep on funding uh, uh, the uh, famine disaster. Um, relations are dropping a bit again with the Democratic Republic of Congo, but luckily we've already signed a deal, so we cannot really get out of that for another five years. Uh, also, one thing that's very important and that a lot of people do mistakenly, in my opinion is that um, people try to boost the economical growth to a huge amount, uh, to, to let's say uh, double digits. Um, I personally would say that try to do that a bit um, in a realistic way and do it a bit more careful. Because you really don't want to um, get all the economical growth that is possible by easy deals within the first year of your government. But you want to spread it out across a couple of years, or even like a decade or so. Um, that's for two reasons. One of the reasons is that it's much better to slowly grow um, and steadily grow, um, because that will, um, let's say, 
be more favorable it will keep inflation a bit lower which is of course a negative contributor to economical growth good news our financial performance in the last quarter shows a cash surplus this will help us reduce our debt service let's keep it up so that's good that will decrease our debt as you can see here that's been reduced over with these i guess and then you have these messages like this one. So this is that Easter sharing this moment of intense spirituality with the faithful gives me great joy. On this holy day, I thank all of our communities across the country, both those in cities as well as those in small remote villages who are all coming together in prayer. Oh, isn't that nice? Now. Our governmental what we also have is the so-called the ministerial targets. Those are people form. that become moles for your government. Using transactional analysis, they can also be moles, of course, within your own government. <laughs> and you have to be very careful with those because they will likely try to eliminate strategic you. Gain in this position by focusing on this it's okay. Let's just try to approach this guy. It can um, backfire. Uh, if you are discovered to try to, uh, let's say, uh, offer a deal to a uh, member of the uh, of the uh, of the cabinet from an, uh, from another country, um, it can really kick, uh, it can really backfire a lot, and therefore cause a huge uh, yeah, a problem internationally for your country. Um, but usually that doesn't happen. It's quite safe to. To actually uh, try to approach them, but anyway, so moles within your own cabinet are really very dangerous, because um, once in a while a mole will ask um, for uh, one million, and for that amount of money, it will try to eliminate the current head of government uh, for your country, or the head of state, depends on who is the most power, who you are actually. And, um, and if that is the case and, and uh, the AI accepts that, and I think it usually does, you can be assassinated from a member or by a member within your own government. And there's not really a lot you can do about it. Usually you cannot discover them. Maybe if you have really high security uh, forces, you can actually uh, discover them before they do it. But it's Here mostly... is our growth forecast for the end of the year based on calculations that we made last month. This is a very good figure. Our economy is dynamic. But don't, uh, but, but anyway, so if you are eliminated, it's game over. So you really want to prevent that at all costs. Um, and therefore, I usually have the security so uh, services on quite high standards and levels. This is, of course, easy for the Netherlands because we do have a decent amount of money. But if you would be playing, for example, with the, uh, let's say, poorer nations, like over here in Central America, um, I would say that there it's difficult to actually get the money and to spend it on such a thing instead of much more important things for Everything the country itself. Has been implemented in the okay, we will join the national holiday. So the offer was rejected. Well, that can happen. But no, no exposure. You can have scandals, by the way. Not always by your own or on your own person, but members of your cabinet uh, or party can sometimes uh, get involved into scandalous affairs, like, um, for example, bribes, uh, corruption, stuff like that, and uh, that can really kick fire of a uh, backfire a lot and thereby uh, hurt your approval rating and the popularity of your party. Prospective analysis coupled with the Brown model on group. I will not approach them. Approaching a, a group is not really advisable, I would say, because I mean, unless you have a clear um, aim, I would be against it. Uh, risks are too high to the awards. In fact, there is hardly any award. Okay, so a we have a off. terrorist in a attack. public library in the town. Many people have been killed, including the librarian. The terrorists left a message on the entrance calling to destroy all places spreading lies and narrow thinking of the leaders of this country. <laughs> narrow thinking. Yeah, right. Okay. In a press release, 
some groups claim it occurred over time now. But this is really serious. So there has been an attack, terrorist attack in Amsterdam. Five people have been killed. And um, we cannot do anything about it. But we can do. We can do it over time. We can try to infiltrate again. And we should really do that. We should infiltrate these societies. Oh, not the we should infiltrate these societies now and try to eliminate them as fast as possible because they are really another bomb threat, another attack in a cinema this is really getting dangerous now. In a press release. And they are claiming it, the total jihad. This is really, really getting serious. So now we are, as you can see, we're suffering in our approval rating because of all these attacks. Another. And we really. We really should be doing things about this. Well, this is the National Festival. My fellow countrymen and women, on this solemn day, I want to express my pride and affection. Today, while celebrating the history and genius of our beautiful country, I wish to remember what unites us rather than what divides us in order to look into the future with confidence. Okay. Our services so total jihad has provided by this organization. Us in there is no doubt that they are the perpetrators of the attack. Okay, so we really need to focus now. Of course, we have already increased the budget for anti-terrorism. Uh, maybe we increase it even more a bit. Another hundred million. Well, it's well spent money in this case now. Prospective analysis. No, that will not do. And then now focus just solely on internal affairs within our country. GM, we have increased the anti-terrorism budget and people are approving of that, so our approval rating is increasing. Regulate the agricultural budget with the European budget. Yeah, you will attend. You I'll will not do anything of these sabotaging oil wells, it's not in our interest. I don't... yeah, it's not really interesting now. Okay, so we have a meeting request, and this is kind of a state visit, I would say, because they really want to meet us, or I don't know how it works, or we meet them, but anyway, there is a meeting between the President of South Sudan and our Prime Minister. Um, so we will just um, change the date and just let it be a bit later. I don't want, because another thing that I haven't told you yet is that it's important to actually try to boost all your economical growth in the latter part of the year, let's say uh, from October, November onwards, um, because um, inflation is calculated on a yearly basis. And this calculate, uh, calculation is reset every 1st of January. And that means that if you try to boost and, and as inflation increases more slowly than economical effects are uh, by scale. Uh, this means that usually it's beneficial to actually have a, let's say, uh, a, a low inflation and a high economic growth, thereby just postpone the uh, trade agreements that are beneficial to economical growth uh, in the latter part of the year, and thereby have a high economical growth rating coupled with a, a low inflation rating, which is an effective increase in GDP. So that's why I'm also kind of restricted now and I don't want to sign a lot of contracts, otherwise I would have done many already. Well, maybe not too many, because I also said that indeed you should spread it out across, let's say, 10 years or so, depending on how long you want to play. This Ooh. person is at risk of a scandal. Given your links, the affair could have a negative impact on your image and in incalculable ways, even with the help of Schaefer's paradigm. Would you like us to try to stifle this unfortunate story? But this is a problem. So apparently a person now um, has a scandal and he's linked to us like he knows us um, quite well then apparently. It's, a, it's an international lender so in a way I, I find this a bit strange why that would impact us but Let's just not do it, um, because I think our security services are not um, skilled enough at the moment to actually um, shuffle this entire uh, scandal under the carpet, um, if that's a valid English um, expression, I don't know. 
But um, anyway, so that is um, how I think about it. So maybe in the future, if we have increased our skill, we can actually increase it a bit. The members of this. Our services corroborate the information provided by this organization. There is no doubt that they are the perpetrators of the attack. Okay. One of my okay, men so now our in infiltrating the center. Infiltrated. We will not do any action now. We will try to just build up a bit of uh, intel on them. Huh, okay. Oh well. But um, as I was saying, we'll try to build up a bit of intel on them and thereby hopefully have a more effective way for arrests, uh, eliminating more members. But people are getting uh, are happy with our current approach to internal affairs, which is nice. At least, oh, a bomb exploded in a police station in Utrecht. We really have this problem with uh, all these terrorists. Okay, so this is a complaint about one of our ministers. Well, that is not good, but we will not do anything right now. So the Finns want to meet us, uh, that's fine with me, let's meet somewhere here. <laughs> you have these so-called internal uh, conflicts sometimes between ministers, they are quite annoying to be honest. It's just a matter of that uh, people are not liking each other so much. This can happen from, from, uh, from problems. You can generate problems for your government. So let's speed up things a bit. One of my men succeeded in infiltrating. Okay, so now we have two agents infiltrated in two different society of uh, organizations, terrorist groups. And that's good. They will build up intel, which can, we can then later use to arrest as many of them as possible. Which will in the beginning be quite uh, restricted to, let's say, three or maybe two persons. Um, but at some point you can really start striking at them if you have more and more intel and arrest hundreds of them simultaneously in big actions. Um, and that is of course, that is going to reduce their effective uh, power or effective strike capabilities quite rapidly. So let me now show you a bit more about, let's say, what to do with laws and, and things like that. So we have some economical growth currently, it's like 4.9%, it's lowering a bit because of the, let's say, the settling of the contract. And so initially there was a huge burst, but then at some point it lowers. The stock markets have been quite enthusiastic about it, so they have grown, uh, or they have increased a bit in, in, in rating. Um, what we will now do is, so we want to have this we want to keep this around at around 5, so currently I will not undertake any action still. But we, what we can do is try to boost consumer spending a bit. Um, so we will go to taxation. And over here you can do all the different kinds of um, revenue taxes that are, well, I guess familiar to you. Uh, so we have the value added tax, the VAT. Um, we have income taxes, uh, divided in different brackets. Uh, you can have a flat tax, of course, if you like, but over here in the Netherlands you start out with a uh, just a scaled tax, depending upon your income bracket. Um, you have yeah, these kind of things, vehicle reg registration taxes, uh, real estate taxes, inheritance taxes, um, uh, liquor tax, wine tax, stuff like that. Some are really yielding a lot of money, others are really yeah, 
hardly building anything like like this airline ticket tax, which I think is just monstrous, but I don't like it at all. I think it's just a pure symbol um, without yeah, really helping the treasury uh, whatsoever. I mean, what is like and the total budget of, of what is it? Uh, 370 ish um, a billion. Um, what, what is then like yeah, 50, 60 million? It's not a lot. So, what I want to do is I want to get rid of this as much as possible. But as I already said earlier, um, this game is quite realistic, and that means that well, maybe with this tax, you this tax, the airline tax, you could actually get rid of it in one go. But I would advise against doing that because that will not, um, yeah, many people will be angry if you do it. So, what I want to do now is I want to balance out a bit more the tax income. So, what I think is I want to increase the VAT a bit, I want to decrease income taxes for the, um, well, let's say maybe the lower and the middle bracket. Maybe even the high uh, bracket as well. And maybe lower the inheritance tax a bit, because I think that's also a bit unfair to really tax that a lot like it's now. Companies I will leave alone for now. They, they will actually, of course, it's very beneficial to boost them and by reducing their uh, taxes, because that will really have a big impact or at least a direct effect upon the profit profitability of each sector and thereby the employment of, of, of the people. Um, also it's quite easy in this game to let's say um, have low unemployment if you boost your economy but it's also not good to really go too low and with too low I mean like going below half a percent unemployed that's not that beneficial because then you really yeah you are really uh, having yeah you cannot really man your sectors very well anymore and it's also not something you want. It looks like it's the ideal world where everyone has a job, but even that is not always the uh, the case. Okay, but let's do this. So you can do that uh, only for the VAT or only for the income taxes, but I don't like that so much because that will just splinter all these decisions in small different laws that you try to pass through parliament with the chance that some of these will actually get rejected, uh, which I don't want. So, what I want is I want to make a reform. So you can do that by choosing this option, new reform, and let's just call it like the tax reform 2013. Confirm. And we will increase this by a half a percent. Doesn't look like a lot, but it will add like four and a half billion to the entire economy. Okay, we will not make a television appearance for this part. So we will create a reform. But this will now be under uh, this will now be voted in or out by the parliament. You can look at that, how it will be received. You see that the majority is for passing this increase on the VAT tax, but there are also like the socialist parties that are actually uh, or the leftist parties that are actually against it. So you could say, okay, let's pass this, but it will really, um, yeah, how, how do I put it? It will really um, polarize the polit political spectrum. And that is something I don't really want. So what I want is to also help them a bit by giving them something they like. And that will make it yeah, carried more broadly in the parliament. So we can, we can decrease this. Like that, maybe lower this even further. Let's make it 36%. It'll cost us some, some money. Oh, we add that to our current reform that we had. And we'll make a television appearance for this one. Oh, wait. Let's just do this all over. Okay. So we will lower this by a percentage, and we will lower this by one and a half percent. So let's boost the middle classes a bit. Maybe also do this one and a half percent. Okay. And then add it to the reform. 
and make a television appearance on these terms. And now what you will see is that really many more people are supporting this law. You see that it has increased now to almost 75%, of, uh, to over 75%. So that means that even the socialist parties, because we are lowering income taxes, of course, for the uh, lower classes, um, they like that. So they will support the, the reform. Um, what we can then do is give the right parties a bit of a nice benefit. We will lower the inheritance tax to uh, 21%. And we will lower that stupid airline tax. Like 18%. This is really a lot. But yeah, it's also a insignificant kind of deal. Now you see that the socialist parties are getting a bit more against this entire thing um, but they are still they are still supporting uh, the majority is still supporting the entire reform because the, the nice thing about a reform is instead of the individual laws that you could also have done is that a reform can only be passed or rejected in, in its entirety so they cannot say like oh we want the income taxes to pass but we don't want the VAT to pass so let's reject that part and let's support the other part. No, that, that is not how it works. If you do a reform they can either say yes or no to the entire reform. Now that can make some things that are broadly um, controversial you can pass these things by just tucking them into a reform and just offering all kinds of nice deals on one end, making the entire package very interesting, even though it has this nasty little um, yeah, tax um, increase or decrease that you don't li that the party doesn't like uh, that would otherwise be rejected. Uh, maybe by doing that in a reform, you actually are able to pass it and to uh, get a true parliament in a very uh, like a smart uh, way, a very uh, shrewd manner. Okay, so I will leave these taxes alone for now. Um, I don't consider them that important at the moment. Um, let's just have this passed right now. It will. This will cost us money anyway, but I don't see any. I mean, we are boosting the economy already a bit, and we might as well just boost the economy a bit further by just boosting consumer spending. So let's have it like this. It will likely pass the, uh, the parliament. Oh, and here we have our televised appearance. We must not be lured into adopting rigorous measures. Rather, we must stimulate consumption and restore consumer confidence. In order to achieve this, we must decrease income taxes. This is the good news that I wanted to share with you. Okay, so that is uh, very good news for everyone, I would say. Um, even though you saw maybe that in the uh, appreciation of this show, we have gained the proof already by issuing these laws to be... Uh, yeah, let's say drafted and uh, and uh, to be passed prepare, uh, at some point. Um, we have boosted uh, purchasing power um, if they are passed, of course. Uh, air transport is more happy. Old people are more happy, so pensioners. Um, however, um, it is considered a bit more anti-social, and that will have impact on our unions. Um, let's take a look at that syndicates. They will not like this. You see that they are a bit annoyed by this law. So I will try to boost our... Oh, this is the uh, agricultural budget. I will try to lower this as much as possible. I think this is just a stupid EU thing. Um, and it will increase over time anyway, even though I want it to uh, be as low as possible. It will always decrease. But anyway, so um, I will try to... Let's uh, talk with these people a bit, and hopefully that will help in making them uh, a bit happier again. But it will not, that will not work overnight. It's, that's a long-term goal. And at some point you really should just uh, help them out a bit and just pass something that will favor them and thereby uh, they will look more kindly towards you. 
I do want to say that in this game it does seem that um, oh here we have to. Frank Rutte has put all his energy into getting a law passed. According to our sources, some lawmakers were impressed by the televised statement and are ready to vote in favor of the bill. In addition, the NIS published a survey immediately after the appearance, which showed that viewers found it relevant and compelling. Now, that's a good thing to, uh, to read about. If you make too many televised appearances, this effect will be lost and people are getting annoyed by it. That's, what, that's also a bad thing. So, uh, do um, make televised appearances where they matter and, um, and, and try to restrict them only for those cases where it's necessary. I, I thought that for the reform it's nice to just make a public statement. It likely wasn't necessary, but anyway, I liked it. Uh, I will not go uh, overhead and do this all the time, so uh, it's fine. See that there is a lot of news currently going on. A lot of comments about how we are performing, what they like, what they don't like. <laughs> These kind of uh, remarks are also nice. Right? This is one of the... Frank Gunther only acts for personal comfort, without any consideration for the people of this country. It's simply a scandal, protested the Socialist Party Secretary General Erik Roemer. <laughs> yeah, that's what we can expect, of course. The Socialist Parties, uh, or Social Parties, they are, uh, or Labour Parties, they are going to, uh, don't like such a tax lowering thing. Especially if it favors the rich a bit more, which I didn't do by the way, but still, apparently in their eyes, just because of course of the inheritance tax and stuff like that, and the airline tax is also a typical socialist uh, hobby, um, uh, they don't like it that we, uh, that we yeah, curtailed those. So. so what you can do uh, with unions is you can negotiate with them about these kind of things, retirement age, uh, minimum salary, stuff like that. So by doing that, you can, of course, boost your relationship with them. If you, for example, negotiate a new minimum wage that is higher than, of course, what it is now, um, they will likely accept. Um, and if they do, and you do keep your promise and, and, e and increase it, even though it usually has to pass a parliament as well uh, for it to be valid, if it, if it does happen, if it works out, usually it will uh, it will actually boost your relationship with, with this person. And they will also make appearances in the newspaper, uh, stating that they actually negotiated and they made a great deal, of course. And uh, it was all because of them that this worked out to be uh, such a success. <laughs> but uh, so now I just want to talk with them and try to uh, get a bit more favor. You're too kind. Other than that, anything else of interest? Let's just have a champagne. Huh, that's not to be turned down. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> sure, dark and strong, please. <laughs> so, they can get drunk a bit, and that can have also impact on the negotiation. It can make things easier, and um, in some cases they can be a bit more, let's say, loose-tongued. Uh, this is not the case for the uh, union so much, but especially for politicians. Um, they can, let's say, some political parties are also not really that, uh, um, yeah, legally uh, sound. So they will also try to do things like burglaries and uh, stuff like that to uh, to make scandals and uh, to to reduce your approval rating. And uh, sometimes these things can be. Uh, Let's say uh, a little bird told me that um, in the party office of your greatest opposition party, there are some very um, interesting documents lying around that could really be hurtful if they would um, be announced to the public. These kind of things. So that's um, that can help you, especially in uh, election uh, times, general elections. You can just, let's say, yeah, give some information to the media and that will have effects. 
the same That's thing. That's the way yeah. it is. And you, your family, your neighbors, are they okay? I'd be happy to. That's what we call entertaining. Sure. Okay, so hopefully this has um, yeah, improved our relationship a bit with them. I don't expect much to be honest. I think that our infiltrated agent was spotted and murdered. It is not good. So we had an infiltrated agent, but no longer. Um, we will send a new one to infiltrate. Our governmental cell informs me that. Okay, let's have a mall in Indonesia. Sounds good. So, um, oh yeah. So the laws should be passed, and um, you can look at the parliament. Oh yeah, and here you have laws in progress, and here you see the date on which they are voted on. Um, you see that it spreads out over across multiple days, just because, of course, some laws just take a bit more time. Um, sometimes you can have, if you have really a, a huge encompassing reform. It can really mean like you have two weeks of voting and uh, doesn't say anything because the end result is a yes or a no for the entire reform. But it does lengthen the entire process and thereby, of course, uh, takes longer for you to be notified whether the law has passed or not. In this case, it seems like at the 18th of this month, so that will be tomorrow actually, um, we should be able to know whether or not that. Uh, the, law, the reform has been passed. A fragmentation grenade was thrown in the middle of the town's post office. Many people appear to have died of injuries from shrapnel explosion. The perpetrator of this attack managed to get away, but we have quite a precise description. No, this is just playing bad again. In a press of course, they will all claim it. Oh well. If the reform is passed, which I expect it to be... Um, Good morning! I didn't come empty-handed. In fact, I wanted you to see in order to submit to you this economic contract, which, as you will see, is profitable for both our countries. But this is typical kind of state visit. So they want to... Uh, let's see... They want to sell us sugar... Um, for a favorable price. Sugar contract which we will accept at least we will not accept it like this how it is we will negotiate a bit but yeah we will negotiate a bit because this is an absurd price of course it's even higher than what we pay normally so I will offer them because this is a state visit I will start out a bit higher than usual and the amount is it's fine we can use some so let's do it for four years though Let's see how they accept. Oh, no, they reject outright. So, oh, that is that then. No contract for you. You can order sure. coffee. Dark and strong, please. And maybe we can try to get another contract going in the meantime. Uh, fish might be interesting. Because we do want to, I mean, we are consuming a lot of fish, but we are not producing a lot of it. Um, it might be interesting to actually get rid of some industries in order to free up manpower uh, for other industries. It does seem to work a bit in this game like that. Um, but yeah, they don't export fish, which is logical because they are almost in the middle of a desert. But they will have oil, um, which is also interesting again, because we know that it has a huge uh, effect on our economy. So let's just uh, request like 350,000 uh, toes each year um, oil and we will offer them like 290 each okay let's see how it goes up let's do this Dutch oil contract I just like that I, I hate uh, generic versions okay so we have like like that so we will now go 300 and they want us to buy more than we wanted, but I don't accept that. So let's go like this. 350. Yeah, this is just always a bit um, annoying in a way, but yeah, this is just how it goes. Okay, let's offer them like 315. Okay, we're now going getting into the middle a bit. 
Well, let's, let's, let's do it like this. At some point they will accept. I, uh, I have no doubt about that. We are working towards the middle. It seems to go okay. We are now at the 340. Likely they will settle at this, this deal, I think. If you, by the way, would offer a lower number, of a lower price than initially, um, what you already did, then they will just uh, uh, stop the negotiation because they don't feel like they're being taken serious. Yeah, so they accepted this. This is good. Nice deal. Uh, that will boost our economy a considerable amount. Um, I think that's all for now. Let's just end the meeting. Ah, here we have. Ah, you see already, approval rating increased a lot, 84%, so it has been accepted. The vote was held and the reform was adopted. Wow. Okay. I don't usually like smooching scenes, but I wanted to tell you that you're well regarded in the barracks. The guys would fight to the death for you, and I totally agree with them. You've got some guts. That's nice. Our infiltrate. But yeah, you saw already that. Um, boom! Here we have the boost. Purchasing power increased a lot, but socially it has not been such a great success. People that uh, are supporting social part of uh, socialist parties are not that happy about it, which I uh, I don't fully agree with, to be honest, because we did lower income taxes for the lower brackets. But yeah, so that's still the same. Ooh. They don't like us anymore, so it, apparently it helps to actually stay in good terms or talk with these guys because they are not that bad in relationship. But uh, this guy is uh, is really not happy anymore with us, which is not a good thing. So let's just um, try to talk with him. But if it has any use still, because here you have the positive effects again. Boom! There we go. That's what you're talking about. Um. Cut the crap. I know you too well. You and your hypocrisy. So this is the effect you now get. Now it's going to get very difficult well, to Well, really? This. A bit of good manners? I thought I was going to die of thirst here. Sure. Dark and strong, please. You can, by the way, bribe them. But I, I don't recommend that unless you have a very good... Uh, unless they, your people don't mind, which can, I think, can be the case in some countries because they expect the things to be corrupt anyway. But uh, usually, only if you have a very good secret service that are kind of good at hushing it up, um, it's um, I wouldn't recommend bribing or even attempting to bribe because that even an attempt can already, if it's an honest person, can already leak to the media and uh, cause se severe turmoil. Here you see our trade deal. And that's good. You can have a look at how it goes. Oh, what is this? Our agent's assessment is that there is a definite risk of him being spotted. Okay, if he is being spotted, he is dead anyway. So now we want to come into action and try to arrest some of them and rescue our agent. We will lose our infiltration status then, but at least we will um, we will arrest some people and we will save the agents, hopefully. Uh, what I was looking at is to, uh, oh yeah, so inflation is increasing, as you can see here, this is because of the good deals, economical deals, with, which are actually, Our sub. which are actually, of course, um, having, yeah, benefits on our economy. You see that the economical growth has really increased also a lot, stock market has increased, the minister is happy, of course, because, yeah, the economy is improving. Public finances are improving. Good morning. Okay, let's see. What does he want? He wants to sell water supply networks. We, we can buy those. Uh, finish water supply contracts. Okay. Okay, let's offer them um, 660. Yeah. That's good. Um, we can shoot more than they could use. That's strange. Okay, let's see if they accept it. Oh, ah, they do accept it. Okay. That's good. We're at 660. 
we will now go to this here. Okay, this has been accepted. That's good. That's a nice contract. It's not that tremendous, but it's better than nothing. No thanks. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I can I can sign more, but I don't see that as beneficial right now. Okay, so it, I think it's on the services. Where is it? Industry, I think, or agricultural stuff. Let's see. No. In all countries. Here. It's judged as being a uh, well, decent average. average country. It, this will not boost our uh, economy so much. But. So we have a mall now in Indonesia. It's true that the blow cannot really be described as fatal. Two arrests. But the three-way analysis that I have carried out, using the Watts model, demonstrates that undermining the organizational potential of the group will introduce a non-negligible danger value that will no doubt weaken this network one day. Huh. Okay, so we've arrested a couple of these terrorists. Um, and we have lost our infiltration status now, so we will infiltrate again. You see, it is growing a bit. Eh? We set the pocket in 10 members in 55, so we do need to keep an eye on them. And keep suppressing them. Yeah, these kind of nice remarks you can have. So the Finnish really like the deal and are really happy about the meeting. So public finances are really increasing. Our infiltrated agent was spotted and murdered. Ooh. There we have, um, it seems Turkey will still meet us. Our sportsmen are ready. The appointment that you have just taken is well noted. Nevertheless, because of an overloaded schedule, we have had to cancel another appointment that you already been scheduled for the same day. That's Let's probably hope a state this cancellation visit. does not affect the sensitivity of the figure's concerns. Hmm. Oh. So we cannot meet with um, yeah, the other gun, I guess, he's supposed to be, but that's, uh, that's, that's bad, but yeah, we will try to meet him again later. The competition will begin in a week. All our athletes are in top form. The fight will be harsh, but they will do their best to bring back medals and represent the country with dignity. So yeah, those kind of things you can influence here. Um, here, sports. And here we have all the different kinds of uh, budgets that we can set for bar sports, competitive sports, etc. And here you have disciplines which you, yeah, that you are really um, investing a lot of money in or few uh, funds. You can also build new sport, uh, sport complexes. You can do the same for hospitals or for. Uh, buildings. Uh, oh, that said, we actually should try to boost our, um, our market a bit. Let's say the housing market. Ooh. Here is our growth forecast for the Nine end of the year nine. based on calculations that we made last month. This is a very good figure. That's our because of the oil dynamic. deal. This is a very good figure indeed. I'm, I'm afraid a bit of the inflation. But it will increase a lot still, and we are not near the end of the year still, we are only halfway. So we really need to lower the amount of uh, good deals that we make for this year. We should settle for around 10% growth, I think that is really uh, is a fantastic figure. I mean, that's the thing that I think is still unrealistic of, uh, yeah, about this game, is that because everyone starts out with a blank uh, set of... Um, yeah, no contracts. You can make many contracts and they will boost your economy without doing anything about the internal uh, politics. And uh, I think that's a bit too cheap. Um, that's why I don't really like to go um, over with contracts initially. Uh, because you can really boost to 20% uh, 
growth, economical growth, but it's really artificial. Because in real life, of course, there have already been plenty of contracts made, um, and, and thereby the amount of um, additional contracts that one can sign will not have that much an effect on the economy anymore. But here, yeah, you start out with nothing, so anything goes, and, and anything will improve it. Uh, to some extent, of course, uh, because at some point you will have a status quo, and then your in, yeah, increase will not work anymore to boost your economy, and then it will become more, much more difficult to actually get uh, boosts on the economy still. Good morning! I didn't come empty-handed. In fact... Okay, let's see. He offers foul. Uh, we, we can do that. This is not really a trade goods that actually affects our economy so much. So, it's fine to actually uh, pursue this one. We will just offer him uh, a bit more than market uh, than what they want to get for it at least. And just negotiate all the way. Till we get the deal. Six fifty. So we're now getting close. Now we are going to increase it only slowly, more slowly. Okay, so this has been accepted. It's a good deal, at least price wise. It's a decent deal. Um, sure. Dark and strong, please. Okay. I understand what you're saying, but I still need some more time to make up my mind. That's too bad. So we have now also a trade agreement uh, with uh, Estonia. There's some fowl that they will sell to us for quite a low price, so that's good. That will boost our, um, let's say, industry, food industries, but also it will let people retain more money. Uh, so they spend less on food in that case because they, yeah, it's cheaper and um, it will boost purchasing power a bit. But don't expect too much from it because it's of course a very insignificant contract now. But if you would do that, and you can do that by the way, I can show you. You can s put subsidies on the food. Um, you do that, I think, by farming. And then you can look at different activities. Here you have all kinds of different food products. Fish, for instance. Then you can subsidize. And then you can either do that on the industry itself. You can just set like, okay, I want to boost this industry by setting a subsidy on the industry for 100 million or so. But what you can also do is impose a price reduction. And that is actually for your whole market. So, um, like it says already here, you can promote purchasing power by actually effectively lowering the price um, people pay for buying this um, but I yeah I think that's it's, it's good for some countries especially countries where people will spend a lot of their income on food uh, of their total income um, which are in most poor countries funeral will take place next week do you want to attend the ceremony no, I don't see that as useful. I mean, the, that's one of these things again. Yeah, the oldest people may die, um, but on the other hand, it's again a television appearance. Our infiltrated agents had the chance to carry out a sabotage operation, a sort of Bulgarian opening, if you'll allow me. So get another meeting. So the growth rate is now also increasing a bit, so that's good. Our sportsmen are ready. But if I may, 
A few words of encouragement before the national team's departure would surely galvanize the troops. Do you agree? Yes. So these kind of events are not that special, but people can win medals and that will boost the effect on your popularity and your approval rating if they do win a medal. The competition will begin in a week. All our athletes are in top form. Our objective clearly is to take places on the podium, indeed, to reach first place. Good morning. I didn't come empty-handed. Okay, so they want to sell cereals, which is a good thing, because we need those. Uh, oh, well, let's uh, Modofa cereal contract, lamp name, or well, it's just cereals. So we will buy those. I, I think it's good to buy them. It's, it's nice, uh, food-wise. and So let's do like 220. 125 and uh, yeah that's good you will buy everything that they can supply and this is a small country in Moldova but um, it's it's fine yeah let's let's do this just let's have a look maybe we make this six six years okay they they are winning um let's go to 35 they're lowering the price, that's good. Let's go to 140. Yeah, signed. Okay, so we will get almost all their um, overproduction and uh, for a good price. Sure. Dark and strong, please. That's nice. But it's only a fraction, of course, of the total need that we have. The, the rest of all the needs, by the way. Ooh, we're in a rumor affair. The judge waltz. Within a couple of days, the affair of Eric Rumer has uncovered new developments that have boosted it to a matter of state. The Socialist Party Secretary General appeared yesterday in court, charged with multiple con attempts to corrupt policemen. A complaint of verbal assault on the police officer plus a speeding offense, but the magistrate in charge of the case dismissed the case with the prosecutor's blessing. The judge, uh, Jung Inc., immediately took the case on and launched a new investigation, promising that a rumor the judge and his prosecutor would soon appear before him, side by side. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, these kind of things can benefit Our infiltrated you. agent was spotted and murdered. Ah, these agents, they're still getting murdered constantly. Annoying. Let's try to focus even more. Well, that, no, not more, but more groups. Let's tackle more groups. Ooh. Our country is ranked fifth of number five. Just behind Canada. There's a big disappointment, Prime Minister. We expected a lot better. The athletes are not the only ones to blame. Our methods are out of date and the state was unable to give the necessary impulse to renew them. Let the water flow a little under the bridge and then set off again on a good footing with the new methods, Prime Minister. We can recover what we have lost today. Yeah, well, usually these kind of things are just, um, yeah, they can go good, they can go bad, it's not like it's, uh, it, it's, Fifth being fifth is not horrible, in my opinion. Maybe it's just a bit disappointing indeed, but it's not like you have to make huge actions all of a sudden. I mean, it's not even necessary to boost it at all. It's just nice, if you, of course, if you have some sporting success. Um, Our infiltrated agents had the chance to sabotage the Iran space center. A sort of Bulgarian opening, if you're the. No, it's not. Too risky, especially with this uh, secret service. Oh, Ooh. infiltrated! They, they are getting murdered constantly. Oh. We will not give in. 
uh, for whom? Mexico. Uh, for, for Bengalia. Yeah, that's good. But they will not get accepted like you. It's one of these, these things that most AI does seem to not do anything. Hmm. Let's meet with him somewhere after the summit. So, yeah, well, I'm not doing anything about that because, I mean, frankly, um, yeah, your cabinet has fair, has, uh, honest and dishonest people. Um, currently, I haven't investigated any of them, but um, at some point I will. And then we will get rid of all the dishonest Our people. sportsmen are ready. Yeah, we will just. Our sport. We will just encourage them. Might, might be a bit too much. The competition will begin in a week. All our athletes are in top form. The competition will begin in a week. Our infiltrated agent was spotted and murdered. Well. Let's just not focus on this one now. Good morning. I didn't come empty hand. Okay. But uh, Senegal wants to sell some cotton. That's fine. It's a raw, uh, raw it's a resource. But, uh, uh, oh, sorry. So, Senegal uh, lease cotton contract. And, okay. So, let's. Let's just reduce the, uh, the price. Let's just pay a bit more for what they are expecting. But well, we want to buy everything. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, no. A little bit stupid. Sure. Okay, get away. Uh, another big disappointment. Hmm. Going that well, sporting. Uh, huh. Okay, so one of the political party leaders. He's now been yeah. Uh, he's been sacked even. Our infiltrated. It's really not going that well. How is the economy doing now? How is the inflation? Three percent. It's acceptable. We are already in August now, so we will of course half the half the year. By the way, for the army, you can also do things like uh, the amount of personnel, equipment. Uh, you need to buy that from the international markets. The bases. Can get um, nuclear weapons, stuff like that. But for a country like the Netherlands, it's not really that uh, that relevant. Oh, now we have a conflict between North and South Korea. Those do seem to happen now and uh, then. But this can really, uh, especially in this game, can really uh, end results in the war if we're not careful. Oh, now Japan is also getting involved. This is uh, getting serious. So now you really have the, uh, let's say, the, the risk will spread. Our infiltrated statements and press. Okay, so one person is actually settled the EU to be actually uh, complaining about it here. People are unfair. The government does whatever they can. And that's the problem, mock humorist Martin Janggenink. 
Hmm. Well, let's just keep it like that. We have a good approval rating anyway. I'm not. I mean, we're we're quite strong now. We've of course lowered the taxes and uh, well, we increased the VAT, but we've lowered other taxes. So ah, well, apparently that's a nice performance, but. <laughs> Good riddance. It's dumb enough that the court condemns Eric Roemer. Here's the verdict, a heavy fine. In Armenia there's been a disaster. Okay, let's just give them some money. It will not help a lot, but at least it's better than doing nothing. So we're as long as we are to 90 percent and the economy is doing, doing well, I mean I don't see any reason to change this this entire policy that we now have. So so currently my policy is a bit like I would say yeah, centrist uh, point of view. So uh, reduce the burden of taxes to the people a bit. Um, Maybe increase the, uh, the taxes on spending money and um, products like the VAT tax, and um, and hopefully by decreasing the income tax rates, uh, people are more um, interested in spending a bit more money uh, domestically. So that is my idea. Um, at some point, I will also try to lower the. Uh, Taxes on companies that will also boost our economy a bit, um, and I will also try to uh, let's say get on better terms again with the socialist parties, because it's good to have some friends, at least not to make everyone angry already so early in the game. So I think we have another. Yeah. It's awful. Ooh. No, no, it's not a suicide. There's no doubt about that, but a terrible assassination. Yes, yes, the journalists are already there. Someone was murdered. The jokes of the humorist become painful. He makes fun of you in terms beyond caricature, and frankly attacks the very dignity of your function. His sarcasm is commented on in bars and even in recreation yards. Maybe it is time to do something. Yeah, well, I don't know. Ooh. Good news. Our financial performance in the last quarter shows a cash surplus. This will help us reduce our debt service. Let's keep it up. Great. What is this? Oh, we have a declaration of war. Georgia. Fellow esteemed citizens, our current situation is critical. Faced with repeated provocations from this rogue state that is threatening both our country and the international community, I have made a conscious decision to declare, to declare war. war. We regret that diplomacy has failed. It is now up to our guns to speak <laughs> for us so that we can defend our homeland. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> Defense, yeah, right. In a press release, the terrorist organization has claimed responsibility for the assassination. But you're in whom is it then? Armenia. Ooh. Armenia against Georgia now in a war. It's not good. Well, it can happen. It happened now. Another group has claimed. Re so these are kind of technological innovations that you can trigger. Can also show you that. Have a look at research. Um, here, discovery tree. So here you have these kind of research objects that you can discover. They will aid your economy by making your economy more competitive. For certain sectors, um, not all of them are so elaborate. There are also plenty that are quite small. I think this one is small, for instance. Yeah. But um, so that is the discovery tree for 
for research. In the face of the attack, of which we are all victims, I am officially notifying the Security Council and the member states of our ultimatum of 72 hours. After this deadline, we will attack all hostile armed forces that have not withdrawn. We will not be intimidated. We will not give in. Hmm. It's really now uh, breaking loose over there, and it's... So there's now really a war between... Yeah. Our infiltrated scientific aid... Our growth oh. forecast for the end of the so year. We're now dropping a bit. We made last week. This is a very but it's not that bad. 7.7%. I think we would uh, nowadays sign for that uh, any day. To get such a good economical growth figure. Okay, so what did the, um, uh, the UN decide? Resolution was rejected. There were fewer than 9 votes in favor. 5 pro, 0 against, 10 abstinations. Okay. So there will be no EU intervention between the Armenia versus uh, Georgia conflict. Of war. The budget deficit, sorry, budget deficit um, has been increased now. The limit for that within the EU to uh, 3.14 percent. Oh, what is this huge amount of messages? Good morning. I didn't come empty-handed. Rajoy. Also, water supply networks. Well, we can, we can use a couple. That's fine. Uh, Spanish water supply contract for six years. We will buy that. It's good. We do want it for a lower price, though. Then you are. Let's do this. Yeah, let's go now in the middle. This will likely be accepted, I think. Yeah. Okay, great. No thanks. My own. So, what is the members of this organization might be behind this terrorist act, but it's not certain. Our services are indeed following a lead, but it is not clearly confirmed for the moment. The members of this organization. A contact. In a press release, the terrorist organization. Another group has claimed responsibility. All these terrorist groups, they're just annoying. Another group has claimed responsibility. This is terrible. So I think I will soon conclude this first part. What I've shown you now is how you can, let's say, govern the country a bit in a, in a sort of semi-reasonable way. I've made some changes in laws, I've adapted tax levels by reform, I've showed you how um, 
you can actually uh, use the budget sliders um, and what kind of effect you can uh, expect from that, at least for the secret servers. There are of course many other things that I still want to show, like housing, I didn't do yet. You can construct housing, but this is sort of like the uh, uh, social housing uh, thing. So that is for the poor people that are, cannot afford to rent a place from the free market. So they will be uh, dependent upon the government to provide a home for them. And uh, that can be done, of course, but um, you have to buy, or you have to build them um, or renovate them. And, um, and of course, they will, be, they, they will fill up. But it's uh, that's something we still need to do. Um, Our infiltrated agents had the chance to carry out a sabotage operation, a sort of Bulgarian opening, if you'll allow me the analogy. But oh, we can try this. In North Korea, doesn't deserve any uh, friendly treatment. Okay, public finance is increasing. But yeah, so what I wanted to show you is that, um, yeah, how the game works a bit. And what I didn't show you is uh, military intervention, that's something we still need to do, which we will likely get involved in at some point. Education is still something we need to uh, discuss, like um, the amount of schools that we have and that we should be uh, built, that we should build. Uh, these kind of sliders. Uh, secondary teaching and higher educational focus and the general budget and we're now even in excess well that's great I don't understand why I think it's only these oil deals that are just generating so much benefit for our country they're really boosting the economy and of course we also revised the uh, analysis the tax members of our uh, that also favors. Oh, look at this. Unemployment now drops to uh, below 1.5%. But that's what I mean with the power of these trade contracts, right? I mean, signing two of these oil deals really impacted our economy to a huge extent. And uh, in reality, of course, this wouldn't be the case because you would either already have such a contract or you would just rely on the market. Which you are doing, by the way, if you don't sign the contract, you are still lacking production. You just buy from the market. But, um, yeah. So, but contracts are sometimes a bit overpowered, I think. There are people on the forums that are actually restricting themselves to not sign any trade contract and try to expand the economy by boosting uh, or by uh, decision making. Uh, within the country, but I think that is a bit, that is really difficult, maybe it's in a way more realistic, I think so. But I don't usually like- Okay, the troops still like us, we can have a meeting with Paraguay a bit later, no, oh, that's a before Christmas still, like the 17th of December, that's fun. Public finances is increasing again, so we are uh, we're in our deficit again, but it's it's low. This is really, really good. Okay, so with that I would like to conclude for this uh, playthrough um, and tutorial at the same time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, just um, like, uh, uh, post a like or a comment uh, on it in the, the comment section uh, or subscribe.